everybody. I hope you're having a great day. So I just want to jump right into my devotion with you today, and it's coming out of Revelation 3, 14 through 22. And this is, uh, this whole, the scripture that I'm going to read in just a minute and break apart is when John was receiving the vision from God. And in this vision, Jesus is telling uh, the church at Laodicea a specific problem that they had. And um, and it was a huge problem. And I feel like now more than ever in the time that, uh, that the whole country is in, but especially Christians, where we find ourselves in this time, we can relate so much although we don't want to admit it, we can relate so much to this church at Laodicea. So I'm going to read it for you, and, um, and let's just connect and see what God wants us to hear from this scripture and from this message and warning to this church. So in verse, I'm going to jump to verse 15. Again, this is Jesus speaking, and he says, uh, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. And then he goes on to say, But since you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. And that sounds rough. (laughs) Uh, But this is what, uh, I want to read some quotes to you in just a minute. And, um, but this is, this is a warning for the church that they're neither hot nor cold, but Jesus sees everything they're doing and he sees everything we are doing or what we are not doing. And, um, so this points, he's pointing out, uh, Jesus is pointing out a specific character of the lukewarmness. And I want to tell you a little bit why Jesus is saying that they are like lukewarm water. We know that Jesus was an amazing teacher. He related, related things to the people that he was speaking to in a way that they could understand. And the the lukewarm water, the reason why he used that was because the Laodiceans did not have their own water supply. And they, they were, the whole problem in that we're going to read in a minute is that they're very um, self-dependent. They didn't need others to help them, but they didn't have a water supply. So they would walk six miles to get their water. And by the time they brought the water back, the water was lukewarm. And so um, this picture that Jesus is painting is that the water, the lukewarm water was useless. Uh, L. Morris says, hot water heals, cold water refreshes, but lukewarm water is useless for either purpose. It was as if Jesus was saying, if you were hot or cold, I could do something with you. But because you are neither, I, can, I will do nothing. The lukewarm Christian has enough of Jesus to satisfy a craving for religion, but not enough for eternal life. And that's a scary, scary place that I I know I've been in there. And God, I know he's trying to wake us up as a church right now in this time that we he needs us. He doesn't actually need us, but he wants to use us so much in this world, but we have to wake up. And um, another quote by... Charles Spurgeon says, um, talking about lukewarm, it says, We might even say that lukewarmness is the natural tendency of our fallen natures. Alas, this state of lukewarmness is so congenial with human nature that it is hard to fetch men from it. Cold makes us shiver, and great heat causes us pain. But a tepid path, or sorry, a tepid bath is comfort itself. Such a temperature suits human nature. The world is always at peace with a lukewarm church, and such a church is always pleased with itself. And that's scary that we can fall into this lukewarmness, that we're not useful because we're hot, we're not useful because we're cold, but we're lukewarm, and that's our comfort zone. And I know a lot of us have slipped into comfort zones Maybe not, we're not, that's not saying we're happy with the way that things are going in this world, but because we're not able to have our normal routine, a lot of times when routine's breaking up, that's time for revival. That's time for, it could be time for revival, the hot, or it could be time for the cold where we slip out and go into our comfort zones where uh, we don't have to uh, be pushed out of our comfort zone. We don't have to be uncomfortable, but we can do things at what we want to do, and um, and that's a scary place to find it. That's the human nature, so it's not, it's something that we have to fight against. And uh, so continuing reading, um, this is what Jesus continues to say. He, uh, he says, you say, I am rich. This is verse 17. I have everything I want. 
I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So the people at the Laodicean church, they were very, like I said a minute ago, they were very self-independent. They said they have everything they need. And I know a lot of us, we don't say those that with our words. We don't say, oh, I don't need God with our words. But what are we saying with our actions? Jesus sees past the facade that we put on. He sees the spiritual side. He sees our hearts. And so spiritually, are we saying by what we do that we don't need more of Jesus? We have just enough Jesus to say we're Christians, to say it, but do we have enough that our life has changed and that we are changing other people's lives, that we are being kingdom-minded in what we do and what we say? And uh, so I'm going to read uh, one more quote, and this is also by Spurgeon. So this is going, uh, talking about what we just read. Uh, so it says, they are neither hot for the truth, and this is going into, see, they, they said they were, Jesus said he saw past the facade that he saw they were wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And this goes into an, uh, why that is the spiritual condition of the heart, how, that, how they were. So this is, this is by Spurgeon. They are neither hot for truth, nor hot for conversions, nor hot for holiness. They are not fiery enough to burn the stubble of sin, nor zealous enough to make Satan angry, nor fervent enough to make a living sacrifice of themselves upon the altar of their God. They are neither hot nor cold. And the fact that we, and I'm speaking about myself too, I know I'm in this mix, and I just want to, I'm wanting to wake up and I want us to wake up that if we are not making Satan angry by going out and uh, telling people about Jesus or uh, pulling people from the flames, whatever it may be, if we are not making him angry, if we are not, as he said, uh, fiery, enough, fiery enough to burn the stubble of sin, if we can't be fervent enough to make our, our, our lives a living sacrifice, what are we doing? We're cold. We're not hot. And so therefore, like Jesus said, he sees past all the facade we put on that we are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And the fact that Jesus sees all these things, but he still loves us and he still wants to, he wants us to be hot. He wants us to be living for him and, and telling others about him and the love that we've experienced he doesn't leave us in our wretchedness, miserable, our misery, our poor, our poverty, our blindness, and our nakedness. He doesn't leave us there. Because it goes on to say that Jesus, while he could leave us there, he says, but I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. And when he says in verse 19, I correct and discipline everyone I love, Jesus is correct. He is, his great love is expressed in the correction. When he corrects us and disciplines us, his great love is expressed in that. So although he called them out, it's because he loved them. And I know he's calling us out because he loves us. He wants us to wake up and live in the fullness that he has for us. And it says, so be diligent and turn from your indifference. And the word indifference means a lack of interest or concern. We've got to turn from our lack of interest or our lack of concern. Are we truly concerned about telling others about Jesus, about serving the least of these, about uh, healing the broken in our community, in our country, in our families? Are we really concerned or is Satan having control over those things and keeping us from reaching out to those people, are we truly concerned or do we, are we just indifferent? Because if we're indifferent, we're cold. And in the King James Version, it says, be zealous and repent. And the word zealous, this is really cool, the word zealous actually means burn with zeal, heated to boil. So if we are zealous, we are going to be hot we won't be cold. Jesus will not spit us out of his mouth. We need to be zealous, burning with the fire of the Holy Spirit to, to, to reach out and to do what Jesus came to do, to seek and to save the lost. 
And then he goes on to say, and this just paints the perfect picture of who Jesus is and how much he loves us, that although he could leave us where we are at, he says, look, in verse 20, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. And in another version, it says we will have supper. Or we will sup together. And in supper, in that time, supper was a leisurely meal. It was not rushed. It, uh, so Jesus is saying he had, there's this warm, intimate friendship that Jesus is offering if we hear his voice when he knocks on the door. If, if we open the door, he will come in. So Jesus is knocking right now at your door, wanting you to wake up, wanting all of us to wake up and come out of the slumber, come out of the, the comfort zone that we're in. And he will come into our lives. He will be our peace. He will be our uh, boldness that we need. He will be all that we need in this time if we will let him in. And then he goes on to say in verse 21, Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. And right there that just shows us that we, ha we have a victory we, when we, can, we go out into our communities, we have victory. When over the situations in our family, we have victory, but are we fighting uh, for that? Because, I mean, are we act, cause sometimes we just allow the devil to just have his reign and we step back and be passive, but that's not what Jesus has called us to do. We cannot stay in our comfort zones like we have been now more than ever. And then the last verse says, Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what He is saying to the churches. And church, whoever's watching this, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. He is speaking to you. If you ever have that thought pop in your head of a dream that you're like, man, if I could only do that, and you can't get it off your mind, Jesus, the Spirit is speaking to you. If we will just understand if he's pressing on your heart to go speak to someone about Jesus or tell someone about what Jesus has done for you, how you've been forgiven and healed and set free, the Spirit is speaking to you. If you understand, we have to understand and listen. So we have to have ears to hear and to understand what the Spirit is saying to us and what he's called us to do in the to live a purposeful life. Again, I keep saying the phrase I feel like we've all been saying is now more than ever because our world needs it. And we have to step up and be hot, be zealous for Jesus and what he's called us to do and what he, the Spirit is telling you to do right now. And to not shrink back to our comfort zones. But to, and it, again, coming out of, if we're hot, it's going to burn. There's going to be some, some fight from our human nature to not want to do that. But we can't slip back in. Uh, back into that, the comfort zone, into the tepid bath where the temperature's just right. We don't have to sweat. We don't have to freeze. We can't go back to that. So I just want to encourage you and to, to just seek the Holy Spirit and what He has for you and to be purposeful in what uh, in the everyday life that you're living. And, um, and we have to, and it goes back to always staying in His Word. How do we how do we get at it? How do we not be cold? We have to get in his word, seek him. And you're like, well, that's what everyone says is to read my Bible. I know, I know, I know. So they say to pray, but are we really doing it? Are we really getting in his word? Are we really sacrificing anything? If we are, then things are going to change and you are going to hear the spirit. You are going to have ears to hear the spirit. And so I just want to encourage you with that today, not to push down on you or uh, feel condemning, but this is everything that I've been feeling in my life too. But if anything, I want it to encourage you and to give you that fire, begin to light that fire underneath every one of us. So I just want to uh, just say that you, I hope you have a great day. I'm going to go ahead and pray really quick and, uh, and then we'll, we'll jump off of here. 
God, I love you so much, Lord. And I just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you uh, that you first off are here with us, Lord, that you are speaking to us. Help us to hear you. Help us to have ears to hear what you are saying to us, God. And um, give us just direction in what you want us to do, Lord. If you've started giving people vision, Lord, I pray that you help them. Give them boldness to take the next step, God, but to trust that you are with them, Lord. And God, I pray that you give everyone um, just a zeal to live for you, Lord. Lord, to speak of you, Lord, to to see situations change in their life, God, and uh, in the lives of their family and friends around them, Lord, that we're not giving any situation over to the, the hands of the, the enemy, Lord, but we are going to step out there and take those the, the things from the hands of the enemy that he's claimed control over God, but we know that we already have victory in you, Lord. And God, I just thank you, Lord. I pray that you forgive us, and I should have already prayed, Lord, that you forgive us where we have been cold, Lord, or even, or not even cold, we've been lukewarm, which is the worst. You said you would spit us out of your mouth, Lord. Forgive us where we've been lukewarm. God, where we've been comfortable, God, forgive us for that, Lord. Help us to be zealous, to be, to burn with zeal, Lord, to be heated to boil, God, to make a difference in this world, Lord, in our families and in this community, in this world. God, I thank you for all that you're going to do in each person, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you just be with each person right now that's watching this, Lord. Speak to their hearts. Help them to hear what you want them to hear, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful day.